Hello Grand Rapids, this is City Manager Mark Washington. I am here at Martin Luther King Jr. Park here in the Third Ward and we are outside of the pool today and I am with uh, several friends of uh, the City of Grand Rapids. I'll start with our uh, Parks uh, Supervisor, John Judnick. We're glad to have Eric Brown, our Urban League CEO and Director, here with us. Also, Captain Trigg from Grand Rapids Police Department and uh, Pastor Bishop who is a local community leader. We're glad to have all of them with us this afternoon. And one of the reasons why I have them here today is because they do great work in this community and we've seen an uptick in violence in parts of our community and this area is no different than others. And what we realize is that addressing violence uh, has to be done in a preventative way as well as a response and the Grand Rapids Police Department cannot do it alone. So John, talk us, to us a little bit about the programming that's happening here to keep our youth positively engaged. So programs for youth here at MLK Park include our summer day camp which is offered five days a week for 10 weeks, about 120 kids. And as you can see in the background, the swimming pool is open seven days a week uh, for all families to enjoy, as well as uh, a number of other activities. We do have swim lessons for kids as well, and a variety of employment opportunities for kids in the community. And John, one of the employment programs is through our Summer Grow 1000 program where we hire high school students as well as college students to help out across our community. And I believe you have some working here as well. We do. We have some here at MLK working in this camp as well as some other camps. Uh, we have three other day camps around the city and they are working in those camps as well. And one of the things that we've tried to do is partner with community to prevent violence and the Urban League has been a great partner in helping us launch the initiative Cure Violence. And uh, Mr. Brown, can you tell us a little bit about Cure Violence? Well, Cure Violence is a uh, preventative model that uh, uh, operates to identify, and detect, disrupt, and then change community norms as it is around uh, violence. So what we do is our staff uh, goes out into community and they, they do canvassing, they present, uh, pro provide public e education that uh, talks about, the, uh, about violence and stopping violence. The ultimate goal, again, is to change the community norm so that the community thinks different about violence and that they join in with uh, uh, other entities like the city, public safety, care violence, to make sure that this, the community knows that the norm is not the violence that's taking place in, in the city. And you have quite a few of your staff out here, uh, your violence interrupters that's uh, here in MLK and throughout the, the community. Exactly. Um, wonderful staff over there and their wonderful red shirts. So we do have the violence interrupters and as well as our outreach workers. These are what we call credible individuals from within the community. They're indigenous to the community that they serve and they know what's going on. They know who some uh, what's happening around some of the crime elements. And then they're able to speak with um, influence or, or, and to have some of these young folks uh, redirect those, what they could go down violent paths to be able to redirect from those activities. Very good. And, and, and Captain Trigg, as you start to engage the community as the area captain, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the things you've done to interact with community and find out what their concerns and preferences are as we know that we need their voices and their support to help uh, address violence in, in our area. Well, we've recently launched the uh, DICE program, which stands for uh, Data Informed Community Engagement. Um, it's basically take, collecting data and find out where the high risk areas are for particular crimes and then taking the time to uh, go door to door in those communities and figure out uh, what the community wants and what they're seeing, because some of the best information uh, comes from the community. And we know we need the community to uh, address these problems. And uh, went door to door, 571 addresses we knocked on, um, spoke to 30% of the residents that uh, talked about officer presence. And that's the big thing, big deterrent for crime is to be around. Uh, but also engaged during these community events to establish relationships with folks uh, like Mr. Brown from Cure Violence to uh, help the community want to share and have a trust that they want to share information with us. I think it's key. So, so, so uh, Pastor Bishop, we, we hear time and time again that the community doesn't want to be over police, but yet when there is an incident, they, they want effective policing. And so how, how as a leader do we balance this concern uh, from community perspective and making sure that there's effective policing but not over policing that leads to disproportion disproportionate outcomes. One of the most key elements to prevention and intervention is presence. And I'm not talking about law enforcement presence, I'm speaking from the standpoint of community presence. We have a world-class park system. Part of facilitating the safety and the change 
is having our constituency, our citizenry, the members of our churches actually be present in the parks. I'm fortunate that not only do I pastor in the neighborhood, I live in extremely close proximity. So much so that starting this coming Thursday, we'll be cooking for two hours in the park, giving away free hot dogs, free hamburgers and chicken, simply to be a presence. Oftentimes you find crime dissipates when the community is present, not necessarily law enforcement. Most of us are, are we are not anti-law enforcement. Most of us ought to be pro-community presence. We ought to utilize the park. Typically, there's a negative stereotype about parks that people never even visit. I'm thinking, God, I can drive past here multiple times a day. We have a new tennis court. We have a world-class swimming pool. But how do we know that? How do we utilize that if we don't have a presence? The, the small nominal crime uh, condition that we have on itself would dissipate if we would populate the parks. So community presence, activation, prevention with in terms of positive engagement, working with um, Cure Violence Everly to build trust as well as engaging our police department. What we're finding that there's no one solution and we're going to have to do this together. And uh, we are learning our way forward, uh, but we can't learn at the expense of more injuries and lives lost. So we're asking the community to continue to support uh, the things that are going on and as uh, the pastor said to encourage presence as well as to cooperate both on the prevention side with Cure Violence but as well as the Grand Rapids Police Department. This week during the City Commission meeting, the City Commission authorized a contract with Planning Next to assist and consult the city in the creation of its next master plan. The master plan will be a 20 to 30 year roadmap of how our city will experience smart, inclusive, equitable growth as we look at our land use throughout our community. The city Commission also received an update from Police Chief Winstrom about his plans and review of the Grand Rapids Police Department, which he talked about improving community safety, emphasizing de-escalation and revising policies and procedures within the police department and furthering community engagement. Uh, that briefing is online for your review and I encourage you uh, to go and watch it at your leisure. The City Commission also received an update from the Urban League and Cure Violence in the Office of Public Accountability and Oversight about some of the plans for violence prevention and disruption. And I appreciate the partnership with the Urban League and Cure Violence. Uh, this is, marks a one-year anniversary, and there were significant uh, data-informed outcomes that showed that in the targeted area, the places where there was presence and intervention, there was a notable difference in the types of violence and the significant violence in the uh, program areas that were piloted. So we're looking forward to the continuation of that program that we know that that's one we're gonna have to monitor outcomes over time. And it may be a couple of years or two to three more years for where we can see the impact of it. And hopefully we'll be able to expand uh, the program into other areas outside of the third ward. But right now the focus of the program is within the third ward. Hopefully you're having a great summer. Thanks again for uh, watching and we'll see you next month.